Hi, this is Manos Brilakis and Peter Taiti from the Minneapolis Heart Institute presenting case 3 for the Manual of Non-CTO Coronary Interventions. This is a case that highlights various challenges associated with severe coronary calcification. The patient presented with stable angina. He had undergone multiple previous PCIs and had stents in both the late D and the circumflex that were also highly calcified and had undergone treatment with uh, orbital atherectomy in the past. The case was done through right radial axis. We found severe disease as well as calcification of the right coronary artery. There was severe mid RCA lesion as well as distal right coronary lesions. The vessel is visible before contrast injection, demonstrating the severe calcification. We were able to engage the vessel with an AL16 French guide catheter, but could not advance a wire past the distal RCA through this area of disease. We were finally able to advance the guide wire to the distal RCA using a Corsair microcatheter, and then we changed it for a Grand Slam 300 guide wire. The Grand Slam, like the Ironman, is a supportive extra supportive guide wire that can be used to engage guides and in some cases even seats. So in this particular case we use the Grand Slam to remove the six friends slender seat and insert a seven friends slender seat into the right radial artery and then also after doing that insert an AL1 guide which we see here coming down over the guide wire and all the way to the right coronary artery ostium and engaging the vessel. So this is an example of a change in guide catheter over a Grand Slam extra support guide wire. We still did not have enough support despite the AL1 7 French guide. That is why we used a 7 French trap liner. The trap liner is a combination of the guide liner with the trapping balloon that can facilitate wire exchanges, which is particularly important here because we had to use the Corsair again to wire all the way to the distal right coronary artery. After we did that, then we used um, the Corsair all the way to the distal right, and we exchanged the, the Fielder FC guide wire for the Viper wire planning to do orbital atherectomy. In cases like this where the severe calcification and would not even advance a wire past the, distal, past the distal RCA, in general it's a good idea to pre-treat the lesion before advancing balloon stents. In the right coronary, one option is to put a temporary pacemaker when one does a therectomy, either orbital or rotational therectomy. Another option is to give aminophilin. Aminophilin is an adenosine antagonist, and by giving it, we minimize or abolish the episodes of pericardia, and it's given, given usually as a dose of 250 milligrams IV over 10 minutes. In this case, we were able to do orbital therectomy of both the mid-right coronary as well as the distal-right coronary artery lesions. We did several passes. But then, during one of the passes of the distal RCA, the patient had some mild chest discomfort and there was a mild ST elevation seen on the monitor. And by doing angiography, we did see that there was some area of dissection in the distal-right coronary artery. So when that happens, the number one priority is very simply to not lose the guide wire position. Because then it might be very hard or even impossible to rewire, but if the position is maintained, then various treatments can be given. So in this case, we could not advance a 2 balloon, but then we were able to advance a threader microcatheter, and then we used a 2.0 new balloon, and then a 3.0 new balloon, and we were then able to dilate the distal RCA, which resulted in resolution of the ST segment elevation. There was some dampening here because we had to engage the trap liner deep into the right coronary artery. But the patient was hemodynamically stable and his ST elevations resolved. Then, with the, with the support of the trap liner, we were able to deliver the stents in the distal right coronary, which wasn't easy, then the mid-right coronary artery, and then finally all the way up to the right coronary artery ostium. And by doing that, we were able to achieve an excellent result with TIMI 3 flow, with an intravascular ultrasound that demonstrated good stand expansion throughout the right coronary artery. 
It was a long case, almost 3 hours, 260 ml of contrast, 2.4 gray air kerma radiation dose. But it was successful and the patient had an excellent result with a resolution of his angina. So several potential lessons from this case. The first is that severe calcification can make a case difficult, especially if it is combined with tortuosity, as in this case. The key for those cases is to achieve very good support. This is a supportive 7 French AL1 and also use a trap liner that provide excellent support to deliver equipment and also to pre-treat the lesion, do atherectomy as we did in this particular case, orbital atherectomy, to modify the lesion and then fa facilitate both the delivery of balloons and stents, but also facilitate expansion in this densely calcified vessel. Part of the case was done using a very strong Grand Slam guide wire to exchange the guide catheter and exchange the radial sheath. The entire case was done through right radial axis, although retrospectively it would probably have been easier had we used the N8 French femoral guide. And last, in case of dissection that can happen with balloons or with atherectomy as in this case, the key is to not lose the wire position. Sometimes in the heat of the moment, the wire might be lost and that's when things go really south. But if the wire position is maintained, then using a systematic approach, smaller balloons, a threader in this case, we're finally able to recross into the area of dissection, balloon, and then deliver stents, which is the definitive treatment for cases of dissection. Thank you.